Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about binary file IO and that simply means input output. And so for us means we're going to be creating a binary a file that we're going to write data to and it's going to be binary data. And then we're going to open the file and read back this binary data. Now, it's spoiler alert, it's not going to look very different than what we were doing already. So what we've done in the two previous video where we wrote some text to a file and, we, and read it back. So we're going to start off by copying our old example and using that as a jumping off point to um, creating our read and write um, functions that we're going to use to write data, um, binary data and read back binary data. So I'm going to just highlight the code that we used the last time to read from our text file and turn that into a read function. And then we're going to have to modify it a little bit later uh, with some other things, parameters and so on. But for now, this is just a place to start. The next thing I would like to do is create a person object. And then I want to have that encoded into bytes. So I'm going to just take our person, turn them into bytes, and then print it out. And at the end there, you see me um, cast the bytes into a string and print it out. There's a reason for that, but more on that later. Let's print out what we've done so far. And as you can see, um, we have been able to read 17 bytes from our object, and we wrote it to a file, and there's the content of the file. We see how what our output looks like when we print a byte as string. Let's see all those set of bytes and compare the results. So when we print this and run this again, we can see the buffer, the byte uh, buffer, has some bytes that are not showing up when we print this as a string, mainly 4 and 25. But uh, the other things, bytes getting converted to representable characters. And that's because we are actually creating binary data when we write it to the file. And we can see this if we do um, use the Unix, and uh, people on Windows, sorry, you wouldn't have this, but if you use the Unix file command, we're going to be able to see that oh, some of our files are actually text files and some are binary files. But to see this, let's write our data to a file. And so we're going to go implement a write person function, and then we're going to call it with the person to write that person um, encoded binary data to a file. And of course, we like to read it back also. And so we're going to implement um, our read person function. And we're going to use that to, to read back a person. Now, should we be opening a file to create it? As you can see, when we try to run this, um, there's this error that I have here because I'm using p as the person object variable and also as the package. So I fixed that by changing to o instead as the variable name. Um, but when we try to, <clears throat> excuse me, try to um, write to this, reopen this file for, for writing, the file doesn't exist because we do not have a person that did a DB file yet. So uh, when we try to run this, it's going to fail. Uh, what we need to do is create the file first because it's the first time we're going to be using that file. So we can go into our write method and we're going to change this from a open to a write. And so now, once we do that and rerun the program, we can see that it works just fine. And we're able to write and read back our data, and we can see that we read it back, read it back into person one, and it works perfectly fine. So our age is there. It's just that when we print it out as a string, we don't see it. But once we decode it properly, it's there. We can now revisit this idea of what type of files we have been writing. So if we do cat of our data file, we see the text, and then cat of our person file, we see some of the text. Again, some of it is missing like, missing, like the age. So there's this file utility in Unix. Um, sorry, people who are on Windows, you're not going to have this. And it shows you there clearly that one of our files is a text file, and the other one is a data file, which basically means binary file. And we can use the xdump utility to also see the bytes from both file, in regards if it's text or data, but at least we can see where they're printable characters and where they're not. The ones I've just highlighted, the 0A ones, um, that's in hexadecimal 10, those are new line characters. And you can also use the string strings utility to see the strings that are in a file. Now, so far, when we try to open a file, um, we've been having a problem. So now we created the file, so we should surely be able to open it. The problem with open, it's for read-only files. So you open a file for reading. What we really want is something more flexible, which will allow us to open the file and say that we want to open it for writing if the file already exists. 
And so remember, this is not create. When we say create, it opens a file for read write and it truncates it. Here we're saying we specifically want to open it for writing only. And we could see that oh, we write into this file now we don't have an error. And to prove it to you, let's change our data, the data we, we are writing. And so we'll modify this from Jane to Jane Doe. And then we're going to go back and we run our program and we're going to see that we open the file for writing only in our write method and we open it only for reading in our read method and we could read back the data. So that's it. Um, I know, I hope that everything is a little bit difficult, but I hope in, because of this, it's saving you time. So now the videos are a lot shorter. Um, I'm going to get better at the editing. Please stick with me while I figure out the editing thing. Um, hopefully there's not too much jumping around. Um, the code is available in the repository and that's what you really care about is the end result of the code and not me deleting and keep correcting the code as I type it live. So um, take care. Thanks for your time. Subscribe, spread the word and thumbs up the video. Um, see you in the next video. Bye.